in our forests, in Aotearoa, there are many, many sounds. And as we sit here in the forest on the island of Hawaii, there are sounds that remind us of home. And we hear stories that link with our stories. And they seem to suggest that in the distant past, we were one. And in these forests, we hear the strange story of singing snails. And we too have strange singing snails. No one would believe us. But our tūpuna, our kaumātua, spoke of these singing snails that they could hear way up in the top of the trees. And they were like voices in the sky. They were like the voices of our ancestors. They were haunting sounds, reminding us that they are still there. That sound warns the people of encroaching danger. It is also the sound of the encroaching danger to the last habitat of these unique and special snails. And it's a plea which is very moving. And our snails sin in sympathy for a snail of this land facing a similar fate, the Pupu Kanyui. Ah, here's an Olapua tree. This is a good one to hunt for snails in. Oh, I can see one up there. This is Akatonella mustelina. These are the real Oahu tree snails. These are very endangered snails and very few of them exist anymore. This is actually on the United States endangered species list. I'm afraid that if we don't do things fast, there aren't going to be any of these pupu kanioe up here much longer. But these are the snails the Hawaiians called the singing snails. This is one of the small native snails, probably the scientists would call this auriculella, and these occur nowhere except in Hawaii, and probably this particular kind occurs nowhere except right here on top of Mount Ka'ala. Each one of the different native snails has a very, very restricted distribution in Hawaii. They occur in one small place, and then if you go to another mountain top over there somewhere, you'll find a different snail completely. What these snails are doing is, is feeding on a black mold that, that grows on these leaves. And so if you look on the, the bottoms of some of the leaves, well, like this one, you see these, these brown or black smears. What the snails have is a very rough tongue, and they come along and simply scrape this fungus off the surface of the leaves. And that's kind of nice to know that they aren't chewing up the trees at all. One nice indicator, I think, of, of the health of a Hawaiian forest is to look around and see, are the snails there? If the snails aren't there, you should look a little deeper because you realize the whole thing is doing something shaky. Things aren't going well. The 
question has been asked. How can a snail sing? It has no mouth. Ah, but the now old ones tell us. The snail lives on a tree. It sticks to the tree. It slides up the tree, way up to the canopy of the forest. And there you find the breeze. The snail finds the breeze. And when it does, it withdraws its body back into its shell and leaves a cavity. And it's the wind passing and catching the edge of the shell that creates the sound. The pupurangi, the voice in the sky. The Hawaiian word pupu kanioi means whistling shell. A more poetic name is kahuli, which means to turn or go under as to slide under a leaf. Oh. 